We've all been there. The alarm rings signaling it's time for your morning workout, but you're too tired to move. Or it's the end of the day and the thought of hitting the gym seems impossible. Motivation ebbs and flows. We all know that, which makes it super easy to skip workouts. Today, we're going to talk about three key habits that I've used and my good friend Phil from Phil White Physio uses every day to make sure that we never skip a workout. I think this is going to be really insightful. Welcome to the You Need a Gym podcast, brought to you by VPA Australia, our go-to source for supplements since day one. As VPA-sponsored athletes, we're thrilled to offer you a special 10% discount on their top quality supplements, available worldwide. Just use our discount code listed in the episode description. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Flexibility Blueprint. If you're confused by the flood of fitness tips on social media, the Flexibility Blueprint clears your path, focusing on crucial strength and flexibility techniques. Best of all, it's free. Free. Grab it through the link in our description. Just starting your flexibility journey? Try our 20 minute mobility routine to quickly improve your flexibility. Or if you're ready for more, our Flexibility Masterclass features advanced techniques for achieving the pancake, front and middle splits, and more. Find links to both in the podcast description or head to unitygym.com. And for those looking for tailored guidance, check out our UMS online personal training. Combine strength and flexibility in your workouts for better results in less time. Whether you use body weight, gym equipment, or a hybrid with both, create an account, complete a short pre-exercise questionnaire, and we'll create your custom program and support you every step. Get started with our 28-day challenge to experience everything our online personal training offers with no long-term commitment required. And remember, we're Amazon affiliates, so to shop for all the equipment we use at competitive prices via our affiliate links in the video description. Now let's dive into today's episode. All right. What's up, Phil? How are you? This is definitely a topic I love talking about and something very close to home at the moment after trying to get out of bed to go for my morning run club when it started raining a lot in Sydney. So uh, uh, I feel that pain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And if anyone has noticed, if you've been following along for a while, Phil hasn't gone and had something done to his larynx. He's actually just getting over a bit of a, uh, a common Aussie cough. Yeah, it turns out uh, when so, you have um, a baby in daycare and your partner's a doctor, you just get hit on all sides from illness. So, um, <laughs> but no, it's giving me that that deep like radio announcer voice. So, there's, be, uh... there's a guy that I follow on in the crypto sphere on social media, Ben Ben Cowan, uh, who has this into the cryptoverse channel, and he's got four young kids, and they're all like in school and daycare, and he is like constantly sick. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. I reckon that I've seldom seen a video where he's doing some sort of a collab with other people where he's not sick. Uh, so don't have any more kids, man. I think it amplifies yeah, the I problem. I think like working, the, the more me working you know. from home remotely at the moment, like at this part of my life is actually quite good because otherwise I'd have to be <laughs> just cancelling so many days. But anyway. totally, totally. So but relevant for today's discussion because yeah, when you're sick, it, it, you're tired. Like, it, it totally really is, you know, it totally is. And I find that the, the older, the, the, young, the young bucks in the crowd are probably thinking, oh, come on, man, it's easy not to skip workouts, you know. But what you find is as you're, uh, and I'm sure the o- older folk in our audience will relate to this, the, the, as the responsibilities pile on, the workouts become scarce, you know, and the excuses not to work out become plentiful. And it, it really, at, the, at that point, you need to really switch and, and make a, a, a conscious change to your approach cognitively. Because if you approach working out the same way before, which was just that it was like the most important thing in your day other than sleeping and eating, uh, then you're going to have problems, you know. And and if you go into it with the all or nothing mentality where every workout has to be the best workout, like I used to train like that, you know, every workout had to be 1% better than the last workout. And if it wasn't, then it was a failed workout. But that doesn't work anymore for me, you know, because life just tends to get in the way of everything I do. And there's always a million reasons why. Uh, Unlike uh, some people, I don't enjoy the process of exercise. I don't enjoy going to the gym. I really enjoy leaving the gym and knowing, oh, wow, that's done. And I love the side effects to being someone who works out every day. You know, the the way you look and feel, the confidence it brings, the strength, all of the health benefits. For me, it's very psychological. I uh, train for mental health uh, as much as I train for physical health. And So I've created three daily habits that I believe are really, really powerful for someone who might struggle with motivation and, uh, and, and, and find that they're skipping workouts. First of all, 
It is to overcome the all or nothing mentality. And we're going to go deep into that in a second, talk about what that means. Second, it's to establish a minimum like daily workout, a, a minimum um, standard, you know, and Phil actually takes that a little deeper. And, and I'm really glad I've got him to chew on that topic with, because he uses this strategy very successfully with, with his clients. And I'll let him elaborate on how he does that. And then uh, the final habit is focus on consistency rather than intensity. And this was a really tough one to get my head around because it really required me, you know, leaving my ego at the door because I used to, you know, I guess ad adopt the same mentality as many sort of bodybuilders and, and, and uh, uh, athletes, which is that you you go hard or go home. You know, if you're not breaking yourself because that's what elicits the most um, response neurologically and neuromuscular from your workouts. So you're training to failure, you're absolutely hammering yourself. And, you know, in the old days when I didn't really have many responsibilities outside of gym and uh, personal training, that worked, you know, I, I could absolutely belt myself and, you know, uh, in, in every workout. And when you're young, your body tends to hold up. But as you get older, it just doesn't work anymore. Uh, you know, sleep becomes secondary to your priorities because so you talk to Phil about sleep. You know, how often do you get a good night's sleep nowadays? Mate, my, um, my Garmin's been pretty happy with me recently, actually, but that's really? mostly because I go to bed at like 8, 15, and then I read 45 minutes and go to bed by 9. So yeah. the fact that my baby's waking up, you know, quarter to set, uh, quarter to 5 in the morning, like it doesn't uh, sting so much when you are going to bed so early. So, uh, But certainly, you know, it just means you, you know, that's at the expense of having any sort of like personal time outside of um, yeah, the kid. But, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, my partner does take a lot of the... Intimacy with the partner is like... So remember oh, that, just even just like time to... Do? just like time to, to you know chill out and once you've cooked dinner and then have like a bit of time to just like not talk about the baby and not hang out with like not yeah. you know do social things and that kind of stuff like just not many hours left in the day but you know yeah. everyone everyone knows this like they've been through it if, if you've yeah. been through it you, you know <laughs> yeah, um absolutely. yeah I, absolutely. I'm, I'm really interested in in what you were saying kind of at the beginning about how you just don't enjoy the exercise process and like enjoyment is just such a a key thing that i love working with people on is like learning how to enjoy the gym and, and be motivated in different ways and i'm just sort of wondering like is is that enjoyment has that always been the case or is it more now that you're training on your own you no longer in the gym with like the group and that sort of thing it's, it's a, just it's been a a really, always it's a, it's a really good question you know that's i think that's why i boxed for so long and i've started boxing today I, I went and did a boxing session unfortunately my my bones my hands uh don't hold up to an hour of really intense boxing just yet i'm working up to it again and so i do about 30 minutes th today, 35 minutes. And then I jump on a spin bike, uh, give my upper body a rest and go for it, uh, for about 15 kilometers. And, and I tend to get that done in, you know, just under, uh, about, about 20 minutes. And, um, uh, so that really allows me to finish off that cardiovascular side of things, because I would say that my boxing is, um, is, I'm not able to train at the intensity that I would like to cardiovascular wise just yet. Yeah. But you think uh, about the boxing that was because you were, you know, doing people, you had a kind of like competitive way of like, you know, expressing your fitness and that sort of thing, or is it just yeah, the actual there's definitely like, that chemical endorsin rush that you get from, I guess the excitement of it and the high intensity of it. I think a bit of both. I think a bit yeah. of both, but I definitely know what you're getting at there. Finding something that you can do, so, like turning exercise into a social, I've heard you say that before, uh, a, a social outlet is something uh, well worth considering. And that's something that I certainly miss after selling Unity Gym, the physical location and and working from home and training at a sort of big big box style chain gym now, you know, and yeah, I've... And I've it, it certainly can be, sorry, like it certainly can be like enjoy, I mean, the social side of things and like I kind of talk about, you know, trying to make your activities fill multiple buckets of your life at once, whether that's, um, you know, exercise and health or exercise and, you know, uh, like your spend time with your family or spend time outside in nature or your um, kind of getting pro progress and meaning and, and direction from your life. So there's that kind of big picture one, but it doesn't have to be social, but I'm just so interested in the idea of like, how do you figure out how to enjoy exercise in different ways and, and looking at this, this topic of like, how do you make exercise stick? How do you do it every day? Um, you know, you can go through all sorts of like biohacking, chemical motivation-y kind of, you know, things to, to get yourself to, um, to exercise. But like, if you love it, if you enjoy it and you just want to do it, like it, it that kind of shortcuts a lot of the, the side there. So I'm just so interested in that idea that, you know, you've clearly figured out a way of exercising for your whole life. And, you know, you've talked about in that article, I really liked how it's a, you know, an awareness and a mental, like a managing of your mental health in many ways, but also like, um, 
yeah, I guess like I, I, you know, we used to train together, so I don't like the idea that you, you know, didn't have any fun then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I certainly enjoyed it more when we were all yeah. training at Unity. That was a lot easier. But here's the thing, and this is a rule that I made with myself a long time ago, because when you struggle with mental health, you have to really consciously set rules and and uh, and and habits to. I guess, steer you away from all of that. And one of the things that I have adopted, which worked really well for me, is that I made a rule that I had to do at least two things. I try to do three every day that make me really uncomfortable, that take me outside my comfort zone. And it starts the very first thing in the morning. I, the, the, I mean, the first thing I do in the morning is have a drink of water and then do a poo. But after that, I have a cold shower. And I I really dread that cold shower, but it makes me feel amazing afterwards, you know, and, and that is rain, hail or shine, summer or winter. It's colder in winter. We obviously don't have as cold a water as someone in Europe, in a Europe winter or an, a, a US winter up, up in North America. But we we certainly it certainly gets cold enough that you really go, wow, that's cold, you know. And uh, yeah, I just make a rule that I have to stay in that shower for 90 seconds and um, and it just man, it just, it wakes you up, it, it, it gets your heart pumping. It, it, you know, there's, there's some reason, there's, there's a reasonable argument to say that some cold therapy is, is beneficial. And it's also, uh, you know, deeply rooted in the, this concept of managing depression, cold therapy, you know, this is what Wim Hof has championed. Uh, yeah, and, I, and, and go sorry, you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so that's the first thing. And then the second thing is... Uh, just on the, on the cold shower, I just wanted to um, talk about some of the physiology behind that. Because it was something that I found quite interesting. Um, I hadn't uh, like known this before listening to a human lab podcast, as you know, the fountain of knowledge that he is. Um, <laughs> but talking about like, how do you kind of get yourself out of that motivation right of feeling like you can't do, like, you know, you, that kind of like low dopamine state where you really just like can't bring yourself to do anything. Yep. And he talks about how like, you know, the, like the body's all about homeostasis. So that basically means it's like always trying to find its way back to balance. And um, often you're in that kind of low state, there's that inclination to want to then, you know, get a quick win and do something that will bring you back to a higher state. So like going for, uh, you know, a little hit of social media, um, you know, eating something that's like sugary or, or fatty or whatever to try and like get a little bit of pleasure back so that then you're in a, a kind of happier state to then approach it. But the way it actually works and why doing something like what you've done there is like, actually the best um, way to do it, he says, is like to put yourself deeper in the hole and make the gradient of the decline steeper because then the rebound to a higher state will happen quicker. So you basically like bring yourself out of that low dopamine state by making the trajectory like <laughs> very steep and, 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 and low, like you're doing something so unpleasurable and you force yourself to do it that it then like bounces you out just from like a neurochemical um, sort of way. But I also think it's that kind of like, keeping a promise to yourself like doing hard and then you can do it i think there's kind of that like psychological and neurochemical um thing at play there absolutely and it it, yeah. it tends to have this ripple effect throughout the rest of your day right so you by doing that first thing in the morning and i'm seriously not sitting here this is actually completely off topic to the three things that we're going to talk about today but it, it's worth discussing uh and i'm not suggesting everyone go out and start doing cold showers it certainly worked for my mother she's embraced it and she, you know she's in her mid to late 60s i think she's 67 or something and she she's been doing it and absolutely can't live without it now N nor can i you, you would think that's really weird but it's true once you start get used to it you kind of crave it uh but um it's it's no matter how how used to it and how comfortable i get to jumping under a cold shower for a minute and a half every morning I stand there and dr just dread it. I just dread it. And I make rules, you know, like for instance, I'm a trade, I, I trade and invest and that's one of my passions. And so I love to get up in the morning and look at market, uh, what the markets have done in America overnight while I've been asleep because I'm heavily invested in the US um, stock markets and, uh, and things like that. And I'm not allowed to check any of the markets until I've done my cold shower. That's the rule. Uh, right. And so, and that really helps me because I'm like, no matter <laughs> what, I want to check the markets, but I've got to have a cold shower first. But then yeah. the next thing that's challenging is a little bit easier. You know, and and for me, uh, because I'm an, a, 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 despite how much I love to get under here, on here and talk with Phil, I'm a massive introvert. I, I really struggle um, socially, and so uh, that the the next thing I do, which I find really challenging, is I manage all of our customer support. And I didn't used to do that, but I've taken that role on board this year because I wasn't happy outsourcing it and. I just wanted to get a feel for why people were struggling with our with our pr products and services and uh, and get back some boots on the ground experience uh, as we grow the company. And so 
The, the next thing I do is sit down and I go through all of the inquiries and, um, you know, uh, cancellation requests and whatever it is that um, customer support uh, requires that day. And I cover all of that. I chat with all those people. I email with them. I message them and, and, and have back and forths and all that sort of thing. And that's something that I used to dread. And now I find really easy and enjoyable. And I end up just communicating with people, which has become really enjoyable now. But that was not something that I enjoyed initially. That was quite a challenging task for me. And then the next thing is after that little sprint of morning work's done, I go and do my workout. And that's where we we, we can probably um, uh, segue into what we're talking about today, which is that I have uh, really, really overcome the all or nothing mentality. So if I'm not feeling well, and that is literally a daily uh, reality for me, for someone who suffers depression and anxiety, you very seldom feel good. You go, ah, oh, great. You have to really wire yourself to uh, disassociate from the negative thoughts, feelings, sensations, emotions, and just push through and then usually everything gets better. But if you spend time in your own head, it's so easy to just spiral into, I'm just going to sit on the couch and Netflix today because I feel like crap, you know. And I also have a couple of little things that I'm dealing with, you know, injuries from the past, uh, gut problems, gut health issues that I'm always working on. And so some days you just generally feel unpleasant. You know, you might have a bit of un um, unpleasant feeling in the stomach if the, if the parasites are thriving or whatever else. And uh, or you've got an injury that's flared up, you know, and I've got a number of them. Like it, it, there's an ankle, there's a knee, there's both shoulders, there's a rib that is displaced and, and moves around and lower back from falling off a horse. So there's always one of those that doesn't feel great, you know. So there's there, there would be it would be so easy for me to make an excuse not to exercise every day. And every workout now nowadays in my mid-40s is about getting to the gym, getting the best workout that I can handle done without making anything feel worse, you know, and so that I leave the gym feeling better. That's very important to me, you know. And what that means is I have to overcome the all or nothing mentality. Like yesterday I went to the gym with this huge workout planned. You know, I wanted to squat and I'd been feeling good. We've discussed this on the podcast prior uh, previously that phil had suggested i do front squats because i was having this problem with my back and uh uh it was you know it was making it really difficult for me to do um low bar back squats or a, a, a even high bar but i'd done that for a program phase now and i thought okay i think i'm ready to go back to back squats and yesterday and my lower back was feeling really good you know everything was feeling really good and yesterday i started warming up and i had planned to do five by five and that would usually be about between 130 and 140 kilos, depending on how it feels by the time I get up there for five reps for me on a high bar back squat. And yeah, by about by about 80 or 90 kilos, I started to feel my rib playing up. And I was like, oh my God, you know, it, I get this spasm that shoots from the sternum all the way around to my sort of spine through the intercostals and everything there. And it just feels awful. And uh I, I thought, no, 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 I can keep, this is not, this is not going to stop me. I'll keep going through it. I practiced different um, grip widths. It felt a bit better wide. So I went to 90. Then I, by the time I got to a hundred kilos, which is still warming up, I was like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this, you know? And so I went, I dropped back down in weight and I carried on with front squatting and front squatting didn't aggravate this issue, but I only did 80 kilos, which is, you know, not a, an enormously, heavy weight for me, even in a front squat. And I did, I ended up doing four sets of eight. You know, I just scrapped the idea of the workout I wanted to do and, uh, and did four sets of eight. Then I did some, uh, you know, 22 kilo dumbbell split squats afterwards as a supplementary. I did some calves and I just quickly on the fly built a workout that I knew I could do and, uh, did some leg extension and leg curls to finish it off, uh, on the machines. And, you know, it, like that really was not the the that was not all the workout I wanted to do. It certainly wasn't hitting the weights I had planned to hit, and 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 that sort of thing. But you know, and and there there was a time when I'd probably have gone, ah, oh, stuff it. If I can't do all of it, I'm not going to do any of it. I'll, I'll just go home and 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 get busy with something else. You know, and um, that I think is is just such a powerful first step is to ditch that all or nothing mentality and accept. And it ties in with the third point, which is focus on consistency, not intensity. You know. I could have ditched the workout because I wasn't able to squat the, you know, 140 kilo target that I was going for, uh, which is very intense for me even now, you know, five, five by five on that would have cooked me. Um, but I just thought, okay, just bank a workout, you know, and even those subpar workouts that you bank, if you bank them consistently, 
they really accumulate over a year, you know, and, and they end up um, producing an, an, an outstanding result through the compounding effect of each of those workouts. Yeah, you're not hitting the intensity that you desire, but through that consistency and frequency of doing that regularly, it has this compounding effect, you know. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was about to say, like, you know, as someone who is so enthusiastic about investing in yourself, like sometimes just think about that analogy of like what it's like saving for retirement and, and putting money in a bank and, and, and compounding is like when whenever you're doing a workout, you're giving your body a stimulus, you're, um, you know, doing some amount of stress to a system that then hopefully you've done enough, you've got enough recovery on board, so sleep, uh, managing your stress and then supporting it with nutrition. And then your body's able to basically make the, like, kind of get that signal like, hey, we need to be able to handle this. So it then puts resources into building your strength, building your fitness from a, a, a physiological, structural sort of way. Um, but then, you know, you put that money in the bank and then if you don't do anything for another two weeks, then you withdraw that and your body's like, sweet, we don't need that. Um, and goes back to how, how it was before. So with this idea of like optimizing for consistency over intensity, like there is no one workout that you can do, um, you know, once a month or or less frequently that will make you strong for life or fit for life. You can't eat one meal that will keep you full for life. Like you need to be, um, you know, building it up and then making sure you just don't go back down. Like it's that, that consistent building over time that then really makes the big results. And it's such a mentally challenging thing to do because obviously, we, you know, we're also wired towards quick results and that's not like a moral failing. It's just like evolutionary biology. Like <laughs> we're, you know, we're creatures that are like, we've evolved to be stingy with our, resources because you know you know in the time we evolved like there wasn't uh you know the idea of like putting on this extra muscle mass that you didn't need maybe wasn't <laughs> the best use of um fuel when you didn't have access to protein or, or many calories so it's it's not that, like it's a moral failing it is just like our um evolutionary bio biology and psychology so you've just got to kind of recognize that and think okay like this is what i'm working against and now how can i almost like trick myself in or you know convince myself that it's okay to do to do less and but to do it like kind of set that floor so you're never doing nothing. So yeah, I, I, I really like that um, approach as you were uh, talking about. And it's again, like with the more and more I've worked with clients and, you know, the last year I've been working online with, with clients, which is so nice because that mean, it means I have a lot of continuity. I can work with people over extended times. And there's just always that like initial enthusiasm when you get started and then it just like, you just kind of don't maintain that same level of hype or excitement <laughs> past a few weeks. And there's always going to be that inevitable drop. And before when I worked sort of in one-off appointments, I'd sort of miss like people would sort of often be able to catch that, but it's been nice being able to kind of ride that whole journey with people and saying like, okay, this is expected that you're not going to be as, you know, motivated as you were at the beginning. So like, how do we kind of capture that initial energy and then just sort of commit to raising the floor of what you're doing? So you're never doing nothing, <laughs> but you're um, staying engaged. Because like with that kind of idea of like, you know, everything having to be optimal, it's, it's a trick our brain uses to basically make it reasonable to do nothing because it'd be unreasonable to, you know, fit in like a the perfect sort of hour and a half workout with like, you know, a sauna session and a, re you know, <laughs> recovery spa and a, like, you know, eating perfectly all the time. So the fact that it is so unreasonable to do all that all the time when you are busy, you have other things going on in your life, it then gives us like, it kind of takes off us off the hook mentally and then we can be like, sweet, <laughs> you know, it's fine that I didn't do anything. But when you sort of recognize that and realize like, okay, there's, it's fine not to do that huge amount, but it's not okay to do nothing. And then just make that small promise and keep that small promise to yourself. And that like, it's kind of self-belief you get from making small promises, keeping small promises and staying engaged is just the most powerful thing over time to make it kind of more part of your identity than some like chore that you, you know, feel like you should be doing. So it really becomes yeah. a part of you. And this is a great segue into the final point, which is establish a minimum workout routine that, that, that is sort of your thing that you can do rain, hail or shine, no matter how you feel. For me, it's a, it, it's a walk over the bridge and back uh, or just around the harbour here, which is pretty much five, five Ks. Um, that is my, my minimum that I do every day, you know, get out. And, and it also exposes me to a little bit of sunlight at, at when the season's right at the moment, it's a little bit, how you're going, but I, to be completely honest, like you, you might go, Oh, that's an awful thing to do when it's raining, but I don't really, I don't really, you know, it's not as pleasant, but you, you, you get it done and you just go, Oh yeah, it's kind of nice. You know, there's less people on the, on the bridge when you do that, you know, uh, I, I probably would, say that sometimes if it's terrible weather, I go to the gym just up the road and do it, you know, but I still just do a 5k walk. And that's something that no matter what is hurting, I can get through that, you know, if, if something's hurting. Uh, you have a slightly more elaborate version of this. Yeah, it's something that's like, 
Yeah, something that I've really like thought about a lot and walked like way through a lot with clients and and myself because this is like you know I'm someone who has been at very like elite levels of sports and performance at different times in my life, but I'm also someone who really does struggle with uh, motivation, particularly when I've been you know lose that kind of healthy momentum that you get from feeling good, and then you know often it's like an injury or something that just takes you out of that flow, and then suddenly I go from doing like a lot to then doing nothing, and so it's been like a definitely like a personal exploration, but then also kind of working within. Um, like the science of physical adaptations and then also in the psychology of it as well. So like with this, I've, you know, I've come up with this idea of like a, the, the six levels of engagement, basically zero being disengaged level one being the minimum. And for you, you're talking about the minimum there as like a 5k walk. But I think one of the like, you know, 5k is like, that's like a walk. That's what takes nearly an hour. If you get up and do that and you put your shoes on, you go and do that. And like, that's like a big commitment. And if, and if you've, you know, like you're super disciplined and getting getting going first thing in the morning and making that happen. But for so many of us, like, you know, that doesn't happen initially, it's particularly when you're getting started out in your fitness journey. Like that's just quite a big ask. But, you know, you might get to the end of the day and like it's 8 p.m. and you're like, damn it, I didn't do the um, what I was meant to do today. But the idea of having this minimum that is something that's like so laughably small that it's kind of unreasonable to do nothing. It's that kind of keeping, like making small com- um, promises, keeping very small promises that then just stays engaged because that level zero of disengagement is where we want to stay away from because that level zero is when you can then just like completely, your brain just like shuts off to it. You just numb yourself with like, you know, other distractions with social media or whatever um, to not think about it. And that's the thing we really want to stay away from. Work, because, work. Yeah, exactly. Good, just like, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like looking after other people even. It's just like a, oh, I, I'm not looking after myself at the moment because I'm, I'm looking after other people. But when you like carve out that, like you make that promise of like, okay, I'm just going to do something to stay engaged. It then means that you can like, put the hot, like put the brakes on that that spiral of um you know when you're exercising well you you generally sleep well you make better food choices you manage your stress better you feel better you feel more energetic you stay motivated like that's a really positive spiral but in the same way we just want to make sure we protect that like positive momentum that positive spiral at all costs and then put the brakes on anything that disrupts that so keeping that small promise to yourself is just a way of staying mentally like engaged and switched on so that i do like the minimum kind of comes from this um this book called streaking which i really liked which is um basically just picking like one core thing that you that is important to you and making it so laughably small that you just, you know, get the longest streak you possibly can. But um, yeah, I, I think that idea is a really nice way of sort of like just staying engaged. And then from there going to the um, maintenance level. So that's looking at like physiologically, what's the smallest amount I need to do to not go backwards? So like the minimum sometimes isn't even like enough to you know do that it's just like that signaling mentally to yourself that you're staying engaged and then um the maintenance which i've I've talked about this study a few times about you know they did like research into what it takes to build strength versus maintain what you've got and really like the big takeaway was basically like one ninth of the volume given that it's at adequate intensity is enough to maintain the strength um that you'd build uh so and practically what that meant was like the people doing three sets of exercises three times a week over 12 weeks and then they basically looked at like if you did nothing versus one ninth versus one sixth versus one third of the amount of uh, volume, but still at a higher intensity, um, what was the results of that uh, for the next 12 weeks? Like how strong were you by the end of it? And they found that like you had amazing retention of strength and muscle mass, even if you did one ninth of the total volume. So um, that idea of maintenance is like, okay, what's like, can I, um, you know, do a brief warm up and then do um, something at a high enough intensity that I can maintain strength in um, the area that I'm working on or, um, you know, a very short cardio workout. So for me, for a while, it was like a 10-minute jog um, or, a, you know, a few sort of stair, um, stair repeats to just get that cardiovascular signaling that, you know, that I still need this. And then from there, going to like, what's the level that has, um, gives you kind of progressive, um, uh, like incremental progression over time. And then the next level would be specialization, which is level four. Um, so that's like, if you really want to get good at something, how much are you doing? And then that level five is overload. So, you know, um, in part of, you know, programming that I've done with the Arnie before, like we've done that, um, what do you call it? That, um, that super, like two week, super yeah, super accumulation yeah. programs and stuff where you're intentionally putting yourself into a place of like, it's not sustainable. Like you will just um, injure yourself or burn out if you do stay at this level too long. You're putting um, yourself into an overreaching <laughs> state. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of going like really pushing to the very top of or sometimes beyond um yeah what your body can handle and i feel like so many like fitness challenges and and gyms like six week kind of weight loss or um you know get strong challenges like they (laughs) they just live in that sort of space and people then come to assume like that's what fitness and health has to be but really like 
it's so it can be so unsustainable um and particularly if you don't have like a full-time job of being able to recover from it eat like <laughs> eat well sleep you know eight plus hours yeah. like if you're not able to recover from that level then you're just going to end up injured or um like burnt out and then that puts you straight back into level zero which is disengaged so um yeah i think like kind of having that idea of like okay what's the smallest amount i can do that is literally like if you were at you know about to get into bed at 10 p.m and you hadn't done it like it would be acceptable to get up and quickly do it before you went to sleep to keep the streak alive like that's the level that i'm talking about for minimum what's that smallest on ramp you can get because often it is the hardest thing is to get started like that once you start so many people experience this like <laughs> it's just you just like dread doing the thing dread doing the thing dread doing the thing and then you do the thing and you're like okay that was fine like as soon as yeah. you're starting it's so much easier so like what's that smallest thing that can make it frictionless to get started and then you might just find okay i'm like i did my smallest amount like okay I'm, i've got time i can i can do the rest yeah so. and i should i should say you know the 5k walk for me as a as a minimum that's the, the caveat uh that i should add is that that's like easy for me to uh, achieve because I've been exercising at a high level for 20 years, you know, or, yeah, or and, and, you, years. and you like, you're so structured with your day and you place like first thing. So it's definitely going to happen. Um, which, and, and I you, also, you, you organize I, I, the time around it. I also spend the first two hours of every day doing research, market research anyway, and so, uh, listening to podcasts and, 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 and uh, financial analysts, uh, market analysts, giving a wrap of the financial markets from the prior day. And so I'm going to do that anyway. And, and I'm, and I, and I just figure I can either do it sitting at my desk or walking or at the gym, yeah. you know? So yeah, I temptation of, bundling from atomic habits where you just put like place a thing you kind of know you need to do with the thing that you want to do. And exactly. Um, yeah. 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 We're using a multifaceted approach to motivation here. Yeah. Uh, but, but the, the, the point is, and I think the, the thing that I want to really instill is that when you, when you you know relinquish that all or nothing mentality and and focus on just being consistent with what what you're doing and then you come up with something that is the minimum for you which which will vary from person to person you know your minimum workout will be different to mine uh, then you create a and and then I like what Phil does where he has his maintenance and his um, uh, progress and 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 mastery levels as well um, but starting with just you know you've got your workout that you had planned and then create a, a really watered down version of something that's just going to get you off zero you know that that you can do no matter what and it could be you know my it's funny my kids i do this little routine i've got my kids every other week uh a six-year-old and a nine-year-old both boys and you know they um they always ask me what can we do to get stronger or whatever and so we do this little routine every morning where they do 10 push-ups they do 20 sit-ups and they do 20 squats, body weight squats. And then they do a squat hold, ask to grasp where they're allowed to hold onto the edge of the couch or one of the bookshelves back there or whatever, and just hold it for 60 seconds to try and get that sort of leg burn and, and work on that deep squat mobility. And uh, and they do that every morning, you know, and that's a yeah. great little minimum, you know, because it, yeah. it, it literally takes five minutes less really. And, uh, and, and I got a six year old and a nine year old doing that, you know, and, and, uh, and I said to them, look, if you do, I mean, ideally the, the one thing I would add to that is just some hanging to sort of decompress the body a little bit, but we don't have anything that you can hang from in the apartment. So, uh, unfortunately we're limited there. Uh, but, um, that would be the ultimate from for, yeah, the, for the boys, you know, but yeah, look like you can create a minimum like, and, yeah. and if and you, is- if you, if you're wondering, Sorry, if, I was just going to say, if you if you struggling to get ideas, comment, throw a comment. What what, what uh, you know? Would this be a good minimum? Uh, let us know in the in the comments if you're listening to the podcast. Yeah, or, and then, or, or and then on something that's like really come up since like doing this. Is, you know, I've spent um, you know so long trying to figure out how to uh, run this new business and all these things. Like, and and start to realize like you know this particular like idea with the the fight like the um six levels like it just applies in every part of my life like you know when it comes to um you know i I got into a really good writing habit where i was doing a writing challenge where i was writing a full like article every day and then that completely dropped off because suddenly it was like just you know it was too much work to get that thing done so then i like the idea of okay my minimum is a tweet (laughs) like i just have to do one tweet (laughs) and that's like something that you know is such a small barrier that i can just get that done and if i've done that like 
that's you know ticking the box and then sort of having that same idea of like okay it'd be great to write like you know this perfect um article every day but you know that just won't happen so like what's the smallest amount i can do that will um keep me engaged in this thing that i know is important to me and the same way like with my kid like you know family is so important to me and i really want to be there for my um, kid and so like that idea of like okay i have to make sure that I, and you know um building her language and understanding and spending quality time is really important so like can i read just one pa- like make my minimum i have to read one page of a book to her every day and that's so achievable and then like once you're there it then like just makes it so much easier to just kind of do that more time but you might just have days like where you, you think that's important to you but if you just let it go for weeks and weeks and weeks and you're like oh i never actually got around to doing that so just ha- like yeah. figure out those things that are really important in your life and just thinking okay what's the smallest thing i can do that just like signals that i am like like keeping that promise to myself so yeah, uh, yeah apply it to all areas of your life because consistency like along every part of life is just always going to be the most important thing 100 percent yeah, hundred percent. And I think that uh, I think that's a great place to end the discussion. Like applying these same principles to everything you do. You're not just exercise. It will absolutely work uh, in avoiding uh, skipping workouts. You know, and uh, it will also work in how to beat procrastination in all the things that you're procrastinating in. You know, whether it's work related, relationship related uh family related you know yeah and it all comes back into that spiral which then makes exercise easier like it's it, you know when you're feeling good about all areas of your life and everything's going well like you just get that healthy momentum that just keeps you going and keeps you motivated and and you know this is what i do with my clients so much is like troubleshooting okay what's like put the brakes on here and so often it is because you've you know you've let your fa- like you know something slip in your relationships or you let something slip work-wise and you've had to like put all this extra time to play catch up so you know this is like applying it to other areas of your life is so relevant as well to just like it kind of protecting that like consistency in um, in the exercise space as well. Anyway. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Very valuable discussion, I think, today, Tribe. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. Thank you very much, Phil, for, uh, for uh, joining us again on the podcast. We're going to be doing this every week, so tune in. And uh, if you've got something you'd like us to talk about, obviously it can be related to uh, injury, rehabilitation, exercise, motivation, nutrition, uh, mindset, you know, we, we can talk about whatever you want, um, but uh, yeah, uh, pop them in the comment there. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to the podcast, uh, give us a like, uh, gently caress that like button. It does help with the algorithm. And let us know what, what your minimum uh, workout is for the day in the comment section. We'd love to know and uh, get a discussion going there. Phil, thank you. Until next week. See you then.